hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing, Smurf? How's it going? Just getting all that <laughs> the Tetrising on the screen. So today, today is gonna be a little bit different because you girls feeling weird and stuff. Um, I'm thinking I'm actually gonna go off of a drawing that I did for Inktober instead of just kind of concepting from scratch. So that would be... I don't do that on this stream, so it's interesting. Ooh, something new. Hey T-Plane, how are you? Finished meshing? Oh, for the photo photogrammetry? Nice. I just, I don't really... I've never really like played around with photogrammetry. I know it's like you, you gotta do a lot of cleanup, right? A cat owl crab. No, so okay. So this is a I, I should probably put that on the screen actually. This is a harpy eagle mixed with a uh epimeria. An epimeria, sorry. I will show you the um so this was from like the Beastober prompts that I Hold on, let me get my pure F over here. So this, these are the uh, the thingies, right? Um, so this is a harpy eagle right here. They're majestic. They're beautiful. They're awesome. And then the the uh, when they're blind too, it looks like <laughs> that's what I was going off of <laughs> when I drew it. So we're gonna we're gonna do something like that. Uh, just gonna get the creep factor. Um, and the uh, em God, I keep messing that up. The em epimeria. There we go. Are like basically like deep sea shrimp. Um, they're really disgusting and amazing. At the same time, they come in all kinds of different shapes and colors. This one looks like it's an actual like, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, like a seashell almost. And uh, in, in when they're when they're sprawled out, they literally look alien. They're the coolest things. So mixing these guys together was really, really fun just because the, they're two really cool looking things and they're very contrasting too, where you've got the feathers and then the, the plating uh, kind of thing. So yeah, conch shell, that's exactly what that. So we're gonna do we're gonna do the harpy eagle and the uh, Ephemeria because I had done a poll a couple of hours before starting this. Whoop, hello, get out of there. And that poll looked like this. So you guys wanted this one. Ephemeria. There we go. I keep saying that wrong. Ephemeria, 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 Ephemeria. <laughs> hey, Free Drag. How are you? Hey, Cam. Sorry you missed last few weeks. It's okay, dude. Honestly, if you miss streams, you don't have to apologize to me. It's like completely here for if you want to, if you have time, it's just a chill session. And I should probably like branch into that now. Like my little segue is, uh, hi, welcome to this, uh, this segment. I'm gonna get rid of this now. Um, of the Pixelogic streams. I am Ashley and I'm usually live on the Wednesday evenings as I am right now. Um, and technically, like really like this is gonna be a little bit different from what I normally do on this channel. Like so normally I'm kind of like taking a sphere and just going from the seat of my pants. But this time I actually have like the drawing that I did to go off of. So I'm probably going to uh, work from that and just kind of like see what I can do with it. It's a little bit of a a complicated thing so I probably won't be posing it in this stream but it'll be kind of fun to just mess around with anyways <laughs> chill kill chill kill what is she talking about all right so I should probably put that on the screen before I start so that we have fewer questions regarding that stuff where's my hold on I just realized this is like clipping into the text there you go uh, so I'll put that up there really quick. Where's a... So yeah, as I'm doing this, uh, feel free to ask me anything. Um, 
and I will answer. It'll probably be pretty chill because like my throat is being stupid today. Are there live recordings available to the viewer after they're recorded? Yeah, so yeah, you can you can get these on YouTube or even on Twitch in the video section after they're done. So you don't have to stay for the whole thing if you don't want to. If you just want to see how it ends up turning out, like it's a four hour long session so like i don't i don't blame you it's just kind of like here i i find it fun like like as a study thing like a study session kind of thing so if you have other things to do um just have it in the background kind of a thing that's usually what i do with streams uh okay i'm gonna quickly add a text thing ep ep Epimeria. Epimeria. Oh my god. Now I'm getting like self conscious. Epimeria. 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 Okay, I got it right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Let's do. Okay. And then we will put this guy, where is this? Put that at the bottom. There you go. That should be good, right? Epi is fine. <laughs> no, and then people think it's like an EpiPen or something like that. <laughs> or is that how you say it? Epi, EpiPen, EpiPen? Like the, oh my God, I can't speak. I really, that's not my forte, so let's not, let's not, mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna get, this gone oh my gosh it's like more tetrisy than normal this is usually why i like going from the seat of my pants because uh because then i wanted to have a reference of now i have reference of and it's just like eating my entire screen cool dope okay awesome love 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 all right so we're gonna get started here if you have any questions or anything feel free to an uh, ask and i will answer Yeah. <laughs> hey, Nud. How are you? All right. See you, Simon. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you like the drawing. We are both doing well, Monty and I. I agree. No, he's not under my desk. Oh, he's in his he's in his little box. Okay. So, I'm gonna start off with the head, which I definitely made more eagle like. <laughs> more just kind of trying to like map out really quick and then here set He won't fart on me this week. Hopefully not. He's been really farty. He's been super farty. And that's okay though. Like I gave him, we gave him like this whole piece of broccoli <laughs> cause he's, he actually really likes broccoli. And uh, and after that, he was just like a fart machine. It was absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> wow, he looks like a seagull right now. Let's change. Let's get this guy. Definitely needs to be more fluff. And this guy gets pulled back. And 
I'm gonna put some eyes in there for context. Hey Flat, how are you? I'm doing well. We're doing something a little bit more concrete today. Uh, normally I'm over here doing a little bit more of like an abstracty kind of like creature concept stuff, but now we're actually going from Shrimp Peak Shores. How do you share a brush? What do you mean? Like save the brush or share a link to a gum road? Like, what do you mean? Do you use a mouse for all my sculpting? Absolutely not. <laughs> I use a Wacom Pro, uh, Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. It looks like this. Voila. With a little pen. My persona didn't win the poll. That was such a joke, dude. Oh my god. I was like looking at it. I was like, this looks like, looks like, you know, the same kind of like style as uh, some of those artists that do like the fursona stuff. I don't know. I don't know much about the world of furries. <laughs> Usually, we'll push that in. We'll just do like volumes right now because the feathers are gonna be like a whole other thing. I think that I'm gonna have to try and like figure out. Um, I could do them suggestively, but maybe just as like a, like for the block in, I might do that. Hmm. We will see. Actually, let's see here. Huh. Hexa, hexa, flexagon. What the <laughs> your name, dude? That's pretty great. <laughs> I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger cause, cause I want to. Ooh, hi. Actually, yeah, let's do this. And here we are. Their beaks are like so, so specific. I found that while I was drawing too, I had more uh, inclination to make it look like not <laughs> not their actual shape, which was very frustrating. Like it goes up and there is a very clear hook to it as well. Hey Daniel. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun too. Uh, okay. <laughs> Keeps keeping tips for keeping motivated when working on a character. You tend to lose interest in it, then be inspired by another concept altogether. Um, 
honestly it's it's just self-discipline because you're gonna look you're gonna at some point in the character creation process if you're just doing it for yourself you're going to lose interest in it it's just the way that it is um happens to me all the time it's just you know self-discipline because the more the more that you work on it then that interest will eventually come back and then it'll disappear again and whatever it'll like it's an ebb and flow um the longer the project, the more you're going to lose interest in it. It's just, it is the way that it is because you, you keep growing as an artist and your interests are always evolving as well. So yeah, it's just a matter of like telling yourself like, okay, I want to get this done. I'm going to keep working on it so that I do have a finished product. product. Um, but also remember that there, there's no, there's no perfect. There's just finished because you could always be working on it more and more and making it better and better. So, yeah, like that's that's really like all I could say in regards to that. Let's do. I want to do something pretty, pretty specific here. All right, and then. Honestly, yeah, just bang your head against the table until it comes out, like something, something happens. <laughs> just, just, ugh. oh wow, okay, suddenly I feel like doing it because I can't feel anymore. <laughs> I really, I don't have any proper tips for that because it's honestly how I feel. Your chicken, well it is here, this is your chicken. <laughs> Do I always begin with the face of my character? Does it depend on other things like your mood, the sculpture or whatever? Absolutely my mood. It really depends on how I'm feeling, if I'm going to start with the head or if I'm gonna do an overall block out or whatever. Sometimes I'm like feeling really like low energy like I am right now. And so I'll just pick something easy, AKA the head of the character. And then I'll kind of like work on stuff um, after that, after I kind of get like, you know, a feeling of what's going on. But yeah, it is, it's absolutely the, uh, the mood that I'm in. Cause it doesn't, you know, I'm not always, uh, feeling super, super high energy, super ready to attack some sculpts and stuff. So I'm just going to block out here, like the overall, like feather shape we're not gonna actually like define anything because i'm gonna try and figure out maybe like a better way to uh, do this than just like my shorthand that i normally do and Let's go and see what these little things looking like. VDM feathers. Yeah, no, I don't think I'm gonna do VDM feathers. <laughs> um, actually, pretend, potentially for the smaller ones, that would be fine. I'm thinking that I'll probably just do, uh, I'll do a lot of fiber mesh for sure. Um, and then some actual, actual, like maybe some IMMs. Not, not a lot of VDMs. I'm probably not gonna use a lot of VDMs. Uh, and the, the reason for that is just like, I, I'm kind of a control freak when it comes to um, textures, like feather textures. Yeah, so you can just do something like that just to 
Just for a block in, whatever, it's fine. Anyways, um, okay, what's next? Gotta do the Baudet. Tricky, no, nah, I don't think so, actually. I think that uh, fiber mesh will be easier for this one than, um, than VDMs. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, yeah, I didn't, uh, there we go. So, let's see here. Epimerians, pretty chunky on the sides. Yes, they are. What are VDMs? Um, essentially, so you know how an alpha just kind of like does like a black and white and it like projects? Um, a VDM is essentially taking the same concept but turning into more of like a displacement so you can have overhangs and things like that. Uh, so if you can imagine like a scale alpha, like when you drag it out, it's kind of like it'll just go up and down. But when it's a VDM, you can actually carve underneath that. So it'll pull out things and have like overhangs essentially. Um, they're usually heavier brushes because they don't work off of textures, but rather saved meshes. Uh, in that case, it's, it's very, uh, it can be very, very heavy. <laughs> Your brush, your brush uh, file size. So I typically, like if I make a VDM, I usually don't have them saved as like a default startup or anything. I just kind of like have them for load ups. If I, if I need to do that. All right, so. <clears throat> Essentially, we're gonna break this guy. Again, I apologize for my <clears throat> my uh, my throat being dum dum. Found out how to do feather textures. Uh, well, I mean, I when it when it comes to feathers, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, I I personally like to experiment with different ways. There are shorthands that I use with just the snake hook tool, obviously very messy, not worthy of production models, but very good for concepting things and just getting gestures, which you'll see a lot of that happening here. Um, but there's also, you could use alphas and then like, you know, sculpt on top of the alphas. Uh, you can literally just use the clay buildup, uh, maybe even not the clay buildup, but the clay tubes, because what ends up happening with the clay tubes, uh, da, 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 da. A lot of people use it for, um, wait, hold on, let me, I'm gonna save this really quick. A lot of people use clay tubes for like scales and things like that, uh, but it, bit, bit, bit. you can also use them for feather textures, right? Because essentially you're, going to be layering them over top of each other you see that so you could literally do like feathers with the clay tubes easy peasy lemon squeezy um so this method can be used for scales as well but also uh quick kind of feathers if you use the brush kind of like not heavy-handed if you're really heavy-handed with it then you might like start like layering up too much but the nice thing about it is that every single time that you put it down it will remain the same height as opposed to clay buildup that keeps kind of building up. Um, so these are kind of nice for quick, like feathers in certain areas, you could do that. <clears throat> my chin wool, it's my, ch my acne actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
you hate heads, so bodies first. Yeah, everybody else, everybody's different. Everybody's definitely different. Um, and then, yeah, like in terms of alphas, you could you could honestly like work with probably some of the default things as well. Uh, there's a lot of again, like there's like a lot of experimenting that I do. Uh, wait, let me see. So that's more of like a bumpy skin that you could get, but if we do, hmm, where, well, no, not this one. Ah, jeez, I there was something that I had done earlier, and I can't even remember what it is now. Eh, you can just play around with this stuff though, and end up finding something that actually like works pretty well for feathers like in maybe not this either but you could use that for skin even that's not bad for like feet skin um so like there's lots of things that you can do just with the default stuff but yeah there's lots of feather brushes out there too um stylized fur all that kind of stuff but the big thing is just like look at pictures <laughs> if you're looking at pictures then you be Gucci. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Okay. Hmm. So this guy, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, has his feathers. He will run his feathers into here. And then this I'm wondering space to slide the VM, yeah. Uh I mean what you could do does drag dot because if you use drag dot hold on let me try i've never actually tried this i'm gonna just like quickly try and see what happens uh where's the chisel let's get let's just like get like some random thing let's put like a like a nose and then yeah here you go so if you use drag dot you can move the vdm wherever you want pretty cool um, actually, they might even have some default, like, because they have default creature stuff here, so they have, like, scales and things. You could probably modify one of these if you wanted to get, like, some, uh, here, put drag dot on, and then, whoop, hello, there we go. You can drag it wherever the heck you want. Kind of cool. Um... We'll probably like modify these if you wanted to but yeah that's that like that that's the that's the freedom of vdms is being able to do this essentially but in terms of like for what i'm doing i probably won't be using the vdms but yeah easy peasy and then probably if you make the yeah there we go Woo! all right Back to what I was doing. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, the v VDM brushes um, react a little bit differently than the other ones, so it's kind of... Don't ever be worried about uh, trying other new things with them, seeing if that'll work or whatever. It took me a while to get used to the VDM stuff, and I still, like... I still don't entirely use them that much. Okay. Overhangs their life, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Okay. 
Okay. This is gonna be just like a block in of the wings because sort of one of those things that are definitely going to require a lot of finessing in the pose. Just sort of want to get a feeling. This is thin. <laughs> How are you doing, Gummy? Actually, I will exaggerate these guys more, I think. Jamie, well, if you get tired, don't 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 forget that you can uh, you can always get these um, recorded. It's okay too, cause like I'm super low energy today. <laughs> yeah, I just figured I would go through one of the Beastober sculpts that I, or Beastober drawings that I was doing, cause I haven't really been like keeping up with the drawings, cause I've been busy. So I thought this would be this would be fun. And most of the votes were uh, for this, so. <laughs> no, I just didn't really like sleep well last night. I don't know why. Just, you know, bad sleep night. Fabio, I'm sorry, I, I can't speak anything but English. I am a complete pleb, so forgive me for that, but also if you know English, then I can respond. <laughs> I go to the summit. No, I did not. I had serious FOMO too. It was funny. I um, I was watching on Twitch, and the one, uh, the one question that they asked because they give away things for like for people watching if you're answering questions on Twitter. And the one question that I answered on Twitter ended up winning a prize, but it was for like a Shane Olson course. So that I hosted a giveaway for the prize that I won for this. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, Jamie. 
Okay, I remember you. <laughs> Commander Shepard! I know, it's good. You can fight it like a Krogan, run like a leopard, but you'll never be better than Commander Shepard. Oh. <laughs> oh. Let's get a good image of their nasty claws. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That that was a thing that happened a little while ago, like back during the summit. Because it's like, oh, somebody else could use this like way more than I can. <laughs> okay. Interesting. 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 So I've been playing uh, Noita recently. I just started playing that on the weekend. It's freaking hard. My maybe it's just my R my RNG luck. Like I am not doing well in that game. <laughs> like I I do not like literally like the freaking the second level. As soon as I get into the second area in Noita. It just ends up being like an absolute like spaz fest of just those you know those bugs that shoot the lava stuff it's literally just swarms of them as soon as i drop down from the safe area it's just it's just bugs and i don't know why i maybe my rng just sucks but i just drop down and it's just and you're dead I'm like i can't even jump away i can't even do anything it's just it's just like four nests four nests all together and is it just me? Do I just suck? <laughs> Can I explain the joints? Yeah, so an epimere. Yeah, here we go. Here, hold on. I will explain it here with visuals. Oh, hi, Alice. I am feeling extremely lazy. <laughs> Where'd you get that picture of me? Oh, you know when we were on that hike together? I just snuck it while you were like sitting there drawing. Here, look at mm, I like this <laughs> this fuck this goblin face that this one has. It's like the best. Man, I mean the one that Alice has, Hex Cats. This is Hex Cats. <laughs> Spiky boy. Hey Eric, how are you? It's just like, it's so cool. Like, look at this ghost looking bug shrimp thing. Nasty. But yeah, that's me explaining the limbs here, um, what I'm doing with this. It's just kind of, it's kind of all over the place. It, it just kind of has like a lot of different things going on. So, <laughs> eh. <laughs> that's your good side. I, yeah, I know. I know, he, this is your bad side right here. This is you in the morning. This is you in the morning. Sorry to expose you like this. Oh my God, this is you with all your makeup on. <laughs> and then this is you when you've been in the sun too long. And then, and then this is me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. 
Oh man. All right. Put this back. <laughs> I look like an old, like, all knowing sage. Yes. What do you mean? Epimerias are the hottest. I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Adapt to skip and write. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. E panned. Think. <laughs> Wee. And and also, also Alice. What I'm creating is what our child would be. I'm creating our child. Can you talk about how I make the joints? Uh, yeah, it's with a, um, a Z spear. So if you just see what I was just doing, right? If you append a Z spear, then this thing right here, you could just move wherever. You can then draw another joint and then move it with the W key, right? And then all of these things, you can just keep adding and moving, uh, adding, moving, whatever. And then when you're happy with whatever the heck kind of nonsense you just created, you go down into adaptive skin and then here's a whole bunch of stuff. You can preview it or you can just click make adaptive skin. Um, I like to turn the density and the Dynamesh resolution down because if you have, uh, well density is basically how many subdivision levels. Um, Dynamesh resolution will literally just Dynamesh the, um, the adaptive skin. So if you just want something simple like what I just did, then turn the density down to one, zero Dynamesh resolution, click make adaptive skin. It will then appear in your Z tools right here, right? And so then what you do is you append and there it is. There is the, uh, you can delete what you had with the Z-spheres, but there is your um, Z-sphere created mesh. And the amazing thing too, is it comes with polygroups. Wow. I don't use them, but it's there. <laughs> How often do I draw because you're drawing? Oh, thank you, Jamie. It like, so I started with 2D um, and then I moved to 3D. I don't really, it just, it just kind of happened uh, when I found ZBrush. So it is one of those things where whatever medium you work in will end up affecting the other ones that you work in as well, like just in general. I don't draw nearly as much as I should, and I want to get more into environment stuff, like environment concept art, just because I want to be able to do more with the creatures that I make, because right now it's just kind of like, all right, I do a lot of weird stuff, but I'd like to give it more context. I'd like to tell more stories um, regarding the stuff that I make, so environment is next on the list of things to start practicing but yeah anything that you work on in the art realm will affect your other stuff because you're still practicing the principles the, the stuff that is transferable the only thing that won't be transferable are your uh, I guess like how you use the tools because there is a certain kind of um, mastery that happens after using a tool for a long period of time, but understanding art fundamentals is transferable. So I wouldn't say that if you're like amazing at sculpting, you would absolutely be able to just pick up a pencil and be a god at drawing all of a sudden because it, you'll probably have to get used to the pencil, right? But, um, I would say that it does help. Mm. 
Wait, what did I put AccuCurve on? Yeah, okay. Cry, David, congratulations on your traineeship. Congratulations. Is it for for 3D related stuff? Game dev? If you're interested in the environments, but more from a production side, blocking and painting, there's a cool streamer that I would like to suggest is Dynasty. He does a lot of portfolio reviews, worked on Shadow of Mordor. Nito! I'll keep that in mind. Dynasty. Dynasty with a U. Nito Baritz. I will keep that in mind. Want to do things like Rick and Morty or One Punch Man for two? Oh yeah, that would be awesome. Well, good luck. Yeah, a lot of that stuff you're gonna start working with uh, Toon Boom and things. Okay, so I kind of did a thing. Mm, we're gonna actually push this a little bit lower than what I have here in the drawing. Make it smaller. Okay. I'm gonna put this in perspective. Duplicate. This one a little bigger. Duplicate. Bigger. Yeah, I'm obviously going to pose all of these afterwards as well. for now just for concept purposes or the blackout purposes I'm just gonna have these like so oh you see him in the background just being like wait oh as soon as I move the camera he's like mm. just keep doing your thing He just, he doesn't like it when I start moving the camera. Hold on. There you go. 
Yes, the the, the chocolate covered almonds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry I move. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. Dog cam is impossible, I swear to god. Hi, Monty. cats but Eric's allergic so we can't have cats but we have this boy who's basically just a scaredy cat anyways he's brave oh you smell in my pen you've never done that before you're always scared of it you smell my pen you smell my pen <gasps> wow good boy good wow not afraid of the pen huh Good boy! Oh, so good! Yeah! You're so good! Okay, alright. Go, go! He got a treat. Whoops! Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Ah! Now everything's messed up. Ooh. Is that a bearing? Yeah. Yeah, it's the crappy one. It's got like a nasty feedback. But I can't get rid of it, so I have to use VTX uh, host, which I haven't installed it for OBS yet. So you like the music is kind of covering it, and I've got kind of like you'll you can kind of hear it if you listen really carefully. But yeah, there is definitely like a feedback that comes from this thing. But it's a cheap one, so whatever. <laughs> He's big. He's a good boy. Hey, Rye, how you doing? How's it going? What should I do? Okay. Let me break this guy for a sec. Let's go. Three ridges. So we're gonna do Ridge number one. Legs are on the menu tonight. Damn, damn straight they are. When aren't they? Let's be real. When aren't the legs on the menu? Okay. Now we're gonna do ridge number two, which comes all the way down.
damage number three. This is where it starts getting into the underbelly, underbelly parts. And this stuff right here typically comes up. the burned monitor doing it, it's actually not it's not burned it's just uh oh boy jeez sorry one sec it's uh it, the <laughs> just the bottom part of it has kind of like a little indent let's not talk about it mm? yeah it's probably best it's probably probably for the best Actually, I'm gonna really push this stuff in. getting there. Oops. Sorry, Monty. You broke several monitors. These guys have been keeping strong for me. I mean, this one literally survived getting melted, so... <laughs> I don't think it would be good at giving massages, honestly. I feel like it would be good at clawing you apart. I don't think I would want to imagine getting a massage by this thing. Sounds awful.
No, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dynamash this first. Do we have the salad just in case we get hungry? No, I'm just like chewing on uh, chocolate covered almonds. <laughs> You like aggressive and it's like, okay, all right. Um, you can see my 2D stuff on my Instagram. Here. Uh, hmm. Okay, so first of all, these guys. The hotkey to adjust Z intensity ups, up and down. Uh. Z intensity says you can just press you right here. I don't know if that's what you meant. Started digital painting instead of the comic style you used to do. It's so much harder. You can't decide between. Oh yeah. It, I mean, like a, like everything just requires practice. The more you practice, the better you're gonna get at it. part of his head. Boop, boop, boop. Bring it out a little bit more. And this whole thing right here. Kind of just soften it out, push it in, and then I'll use like a different uh, subtool for the inner part. Mm -hmm. Wings, bye bye for now.
horror version of how many licks would it take to get- Oh, stop it. Stop it, cake. <laughs> Be nasty. You can head to bed. See ya, Jamie. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you, Link. How are you doing, by the way? It's interesting to see you uh, in the stream again. The stream. With the whole link to- yeah, you're doing that big project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hope that's going pretty good. Imagine that's, uh, that's a lot of work. The multiple transpose transpose tool selection. So if you're uh, if you click W, you have your gizmo open. You can say transpose all selected subtools, and then with Control and Shift, you can start to click on things to add them. And then if you Control dra Control Shift drag off, it'll select everything. Control Shift click off, it will unselect everything. You can Control Shift drag and select a 
you know a, a couple of them whatever whatever works for you or just click with control shift selected but that's with uh transpose all on right here that's that's essentially what's happening with that one all right I'm gonna take that off here. Where is standard? There we go. RGB, fill object, RGB. Back to this guy. Yeah, you need to do it on two giant sheets instead of just one. Yikes, man, that's like a lot of work. I hope you're at least having fun with it. Odd boy. <laughs> How you doing, Chicken Hawk? Yeah, he's a weird one. It's for the... So I have like a bunch of prompts. I think I told you guys this the last stream. Actually, yes, I definitely told you this the last stream um, for Inktober. And this is one of them that I did.
What is this creature? Oh, it's a harpy eagle mixed with an epimeria. An epi eagle. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. I have noticed you don't smooth. You really have to stop doing that. When I'm working low poly, I never smooth. This is really low poly. I, lo I love sculpting low poly too. Because then I can just like focus on big bold shapes. This guy's got a hell yeah. Much more of an intense beak. It's interesting actually, this comes like way further up. It's really neat. You learn so much looking at reference, what do you know? Always be looking at your reference. Dictating the flow of the feathers is quite important when you're dealing with such a large shape that is more or less just like, well it honestly is, it's like all the directions of the features are dictated by what these feathers look like. So you kind of have to do a little bit of this shorthand when you're blocking out just to figure Figure that stuff out. And Probably do the eyelid stuff later. Sorry, I'm not like looking at chat right now. 
I will, I will, I will take a gander in a second. A plumis. So this stuff actually comes upwards, which is pretty cool. It all kind of goes up. There we go. And then this guy is out, down. And then we'll take the pinch brush to really How long have I been working in ZBrush? I have been working in ZBrush for five years, going on six years, I think, something like that, I'd have to say, yeah. So these guys. This is going to be more of the ephemeria stuff, and then let's get, um, yeah, we could, we could get like a, I'll just do a curve tube. Yeah. Yeah, I use snake hook instead of move, it's just like a lot easier for me. Um. Like, like, just, it's a lot faster. for now, I guess. Doesn't really matter. I'm probably just gonna redo these uh, when I have to pose them anyways. Like, you know, considering. I'll just leave them there, whatever. I'll definitely have to redo these ones. Looks like a shrimp, because he is a shrimp. Epimerias are shrimp. So it's good that it looks like a shrimp. Hey! How are you doing, Mr. Lopez? What feature would I like to see in ZBrush 2020? Honestly, the stuff that they've been showing. I don't have any particular wishes for um, the program. I'm pretty happy with how it is. I would say that the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the stuff that they showed at the summit, um, the color correcting stuff for the poly paint things is really, really cool. I think I'll probably use a lot of that. Eagle shrimp, exactly. <laughs> How am I gonna go about doing the wings? Well, I have them as a block out right now, right? Like, they're kind of like here, but, oh, you know what? I can kind of see what's the problem with this right now, because it's the uh, the curve of the bodies too. Wait, right, here we go. Not 100% sure how I'm gonna handle the wings right now. I'm probably just gonna leave it sketchy for this stream. But if I decide that I wanna finish this, I will probably do something in regards, in, in the line of uh, IMM. Like an IMM brush. And, uh, and just general, like, Sculpting, mostly IMM, probably a lot of fiber mesh too. 
Yeah, this will be a super. Do I change any snake hook settings? No, honestly, I, I just use default snake hook. Um, the only thing I would say that sometimes I do, which is not this drag dot thing, by the way, like that's nothing. Um, snake hook, normally I, uh, like I'll put AccuCurve on it. So AccuCurve you can get if you go into the brush menu and you click the curve uh, drop down, and then you can see AccuCurve is right there. That is per brush. So if you switch to another brush, it won't be active. I just have it as like a thing on my UI because then I kind of click it on and off all the time. And what AccuCurve does, I'm gonna say real quick, click, click, click. What AccuCurve essentially does is, we'll go over to Test Sphere over here and you can see that it makes a very sharp point. Um, and then if you turn AccuCurve off, you just get something that kind of keeps going like this. So sometimes I like to ha have a really controlled point. Sometimes I don't, and I would rather just move things freely. So that's the, the difference there. Is ZBrush your real job in the real world? Um, yes and no. Uh, yeah, because I use ZBrush to concept a lot of stuff, but a lot of my work is also just in Maya, and ZBrush is sort of just a quick part of it. But um, if I'm if I'm doing like concept stuff, then absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'm mostly using ZBrush just to do stuff really fast. But if it's like if I have to do full characters, then ZBrush ends up being actually kind of a smaller part of the process. It's always the most fun, but it's usually like a smaller part of the process. Legends say it's real. Uh, how I shaped it, Eddie. You can you can always like go and scrub through the stream. Actually, like if you go into the video section, you can uh, you can check out yourself. But I, if I use the history brush, you won't be able to really like actually see how I shaped it um, because it's multiple parts and I moved it around a whole bunch. You're building your portfolio on ArtStation. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. You are... You are really trying to get my attention right now, aren't you? Uh, you've been trying to... Wait, you've been trying to play with the software, but you're... New yeah, but I mean, you're gonna get better at it. Like, don't worry about that. The more you do, the easier it'll become. Monty intensifies, yeah. He wants to lick. He was licking my ankles earlier. He just loves licking. He just licks, 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 licks. The ankles are exposed. The licks shall happen. Oh, uh, what was I gonna do? Right, right, right. Append. Just for blackout purposes. Don't start tornadoing, oh my gosh. 
when he gets frustrated or like mad at me if I'm not paying attention to him, he starts doing that. He starts like spinning in a circle. He literally just spins. Oh my god, he's spinning. <laughs> Boy. Okay, throw your bone. Be mad. See if I care. It's four hours once a week. Child, you can survive. I know you can. Oh my god. He had like a big excursion out today in, in the park too. Like I don't... He's never enough. Need more. Do I work for for a company? No, I'm a freelance artist. I mean, companies like I work for like studios, like studio related freelance. But a lot of what I do is NDA, so I can't talk about it at all. You're welcome for that. I, I love cats. I just we can't have any because uh, Eric's allergic. So we got the boy, -o, the boy doggo, and we're very happy with our boy. You know you made it when you can't talk about anything. Yep. Mm hmm Feels good, man. <laughs> I don't really mind, though. Like, everything that I do for studio work that's NDA or whatever, like, it usually never sees the light of day. And I used to be upset about that, but because I do so much like personal work now it just it really doesn't bother me so if it does you know the stuff that i do for studio work i'll be proud of it but if it doesn't see the light of day it's like well i can always do something myself that's my own personal stuff and i won't like i won't think about it after that <laughs> Like, for example, all this stuff that I did for Next Gen didn't post that because Netflix was all like, Wee. so couldn't do that. The many other things that I did for, like, while I was working at ARC, couldn't post those. So they were very, very strict about that. And then all the stuff that I'm doing freelance, yeah, can't post that stuff either. Which I understand. I understand. Especially because now it's more of a... Um, now it's more of a... Well, I'm more of like a concept, like... Uh, viz dev artist, I would say. Doing a lot of stuff for, like, pre-production. So if it were to be allowed to be released, I would have to talk about it after the entire thing even gets like greenlit and even then it's like maybe not oh <laughs> oh i couldn't mute it on time hopefully that wasn't loud <laughs> why doesn't it see the light of day because it's more concept stuff so a lot of it's trashed Ah yes, the life of a concept sculptor where you sculpt so many things and most of it goes in the garbage. Feels good, man! <laughs> then 
thank you. Yeah, I worked on Next Gen. I did half of the characters on it. Yep. Half. Half arenos. I just didn't do any of the robot stuff. I also was a surfacing artist on Next Gen and surfaced a lot of the characters too. They pay you? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, well, I can eat, so I'm not mad. <laughs> I, when I, like a couple years ago, I used to be pretty upset about this kind of stuff, but, you know, it's just, just work on your own stuff, like, as long as you're work, you know, you have your work at home, and you make sure to make that a priority, then you should be fine. I know that a lot of people, when they go to studio to work, they want to shut off when they come home and do other things, which is the healthy mindset to have, honestly. Um, but in my case, like, I couldn't. Because, like, everything, like, I couldn't use anything in my portfolio. And, like, it was at one point, too, where um, an art director where I used to work, I'm not gonna name names, overheard me talking to somebody else about how I thought it was like unfair that I couldn't share the stuff that I worked on, like it didn't make any sense, like how am I supposed to get a job after this, like blah blah blah. And the guy literally like called me over in front of like, a, he called the producer of my show first and foremost. <laughs> and then the producer had to come over, start having a talk with me, and I was like, what the heck? And then he chimed in afterwards and was just like, yeah, you can't be talking about these things in studio. Like, you're gonna upset the clients, like all this kind of stuff. Like, you do realize that you're supposed to like, you know, you're supposed to work like as much as you possibly can, like sleep when you're dead kind of mentality. And he was just like, it was really like, looking back on it, it was really toxic to promote that kind of behavior. Um, especially when you're talking to a junior, but at the time, like, I was angry, but I didn't know why I was angry. And, uh, and he, he would literally tell me, like, when I, like, you guys have it so good these days, like, when I was your age, like, I had to work, you know, 18 hour shifts, and then when I went home, I only had, like, maybe two hours to, like, do like a little bit of work here and there and I would and I wouldn't go out and I wouldn't go drinking and stuff I would just like I would just work work on art and then that's how you're supposed to get a job and I'm like that's insane that's absolutely insane like art shouldn't be a martyr thing you should have to martyr yourself it's absolutely ridiculous so that was toxic but you know as much as like if you're at a job it's telling you you have to be working constant overtime. It's not really ideal either. Sleep is so important for you. Yeah, most of <laughs> Yeah, he was he wasn't even on my project. He was like on a different project. The way that the studio was set up, it was it, it's not even it, it went under. It's not even around anymore. So I don't feel bad talking about these things, but it's just like you know, as a junior hearing that kind of stuff, it's just, it's toxic. It's a toxic mentality and like, I get it. Yeah, you have to work hard to, you know, get where you want to get, but to sacrifice your sleep and your well-being for it and to get angry at like, you know, a young artist you're just coming into the industry, like this is your first job and the young artist is like, well, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, how come I can't share it even with a password? This makes no sense. Like, I understand NDA like that. That makes sense to me. But after it's released, how come they're still coming after me saying like, I can't use a, in the like even with a password and then getting angry at that person is uh uncalled for and toxic and so if you have anybody treating you like that in your new job it's wrong 
I'm just gonna put that out there. better to approach these things with compassion and understanding rather than well back in my day you know like <laughs> oh i'm sorry i didn't realize that we can't evolve and move past these kinds of things and have a better workplace a healthier workplace no it has to be the way it has always been i went through the trenches so everyone has to go through the trenches if i experienced it then you must experience it it's like that's the toxic mentality that doesn't allow progress it's like we should always be working towards making it easier for people entering whatever industry we're in just make it easier and easier and healthier <laughs> We did, we drew digitally on it as paint. Oh God, I don't think anyone did that, Link. I honestly think, don't think anyone did that. Student debt thing all over again. Honestly, yeah, the student debt thing doesn't just come down to um, finances either because like when I graduated, I remember I was like 35K in debt and that's like nothing to, compared to a lot of other people. Um, and I, I don't even use my degree either, which really blows, right? I don't know that some people actually will use their degree, but like I didn't even use mine because it's 2D animation, so whatever. Um, but 35K in debt, I already wasn't going out and doing things because I was paying off my student debt. And so then to hear that I have to have even less of a life and work even harder, it was just like, it's just soul crushing and wrong. Like it shouldn't be that way. Needing sleep and a break once in a while, otherwise you will burn yourself and affect yourself and you need to need your health and mental well-being to produce art to function. Absolutely. And to be honest with you, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not getting enough sleep, it will trickle down into every other part of your life. Your mood won't be good. Your art won't be good. Your health will start to deteriorate. You won't be able to learn properly. There's all kinds of things that happen to you when you don't get enough sleep. And essentially, you're just gonna die faster if you're not sleeping enough. It's the truth. So. It's not even just about burnout. It's quite literally about like just your health. It's not something that should be optional. shouldn't be you know that whole like oh sleep when you're dead well you're literally going to kill yourself faster so congratulations it's not lazy to get the right amount of sleep it's not anything to do with that it's necessary If you don't believe me too, you should definitely look up the effects that sleep deprivation has on your body. Um, sleep depri deprivation at its most hardcore uh, actually will start to deteriorate your DNA itself. So then that's true. You can, you can go and check that out. <laughs> so if you're not getting enough sleep, your DNA itself starts to break down. How fun is that? <laughs> Yeah, your IQ goes down, you're unable to uh, basically process information properly if you don't get enough sleep. Um, so sleep, essentially, when, you, when you're learning something, everything from the day prior when you, take, when you go to sleep will start to be recorded uh, through your hippocampus or whatever the frig it's called. And so if you're 
if you're sleep deprived, essentially you're not letting your brain save that information to your hard disk, right? So the less sleep you have, the less memory retention, um, which is insane considering students have like this crazy, crazy kind of mentality that it's like, hey, I'm gonna spend a whole week not sleeping. I mean, I did it as well. So it was like, it was cool to, it was almost like cool to say like, yeah, I had less sleep than everybody else. Like I'm more hardcore. No, you're just killing yourself and you're not learning. Your skills aren't being retained. Everything that you're practicing isn't being retained as well as it could be. And so you want to optimize how you're learning and how you're improving it or get eight hours of sleep. Get into that REM cycle a couple of times a night. It's really important. The entertainment industry in general, the more I got into the into it, the more I started to realize you wouldn't be able to handle it. Yeah, it's really it's it's a lot. I really enjoy freelancing, but there are times where it's just like, you know, the the sleep sacrifice thing comes into play and it just it, it really blows that that has to be a thing sometimes. I don't think it's it, it should be at all. Uh, getting your getting a, the right amount of sleep should be a necessity, not an optional thing. Should probably dynamesh this now. It's almost time for break. Yeah, ten minutes. <laughs> The work environment and people's mindset about it changes soon because I fear for a lot of young people in there. Honestly, yeah, and I think I think uh, I think we're 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 getting there, right? Like enough people are speaking out about it that I think um, change is going to happen and is happening. Have you been having problems when loading IMM brushes or even Z remesher? When you click Z brush, it crashes quite often. Uh, no, I haven't. And in terms of that, I would reach out to Pixelogic themselves because I'm not. I don't. It might just be your system. It might be a faulty install. Um, yeah, I can't really. I can't really help with like the tech related stuff. All right. Well, you gotta get into a habit of going to sleep more or less at the same time every night. It makes it a lot easier. But I, cause like I have, I have serious problems sleeping as well. That's because my schedule always is like, you know, all over the place. And that's because of freelance a lot of the time. Um, but going to bed at the same time every night usually, usually kind of works out. Nom nom time. Yeah, I should, ooh, ooh, food time. Hi, thank you, Eric. Okay, I'll go take, I'll, I'll be out in like five minutes. I just want to finish this little thing. 
my favorite feature that will come with the next ZBrush. I keep saying like the um, uh, the color correction for um, poly paint, all the poly paint stuff. That is my most exciting feature. I will leave it here and I will go and eat and uh, I'll be back in just like you know five-ish minutes because I'm just gonna shove the food down my face uh, let's see put this guy on Oop, right here and the BRB text there we go I'm gonna save real quick and uh, put that back. Boom. I okay. I am going to be back in a couple minutes. Get up and stretch.
Hello, I'm back. Hey, Monty. Can you sit pretty? Can we see that? Yes, very good. Okay, here you go. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, guys, you have no idea. Ooh. Okay. Wow, that was awesome. Okay, I love it when Eric gives me food midstream. Uh, <laughs> I have to eat it so fast, which makes me really sad because it's always like he's so good at cooking. God. He made like uh, a, like this massive salad and then there was like this like chicken on it and stuff and it was just like... <laughs> it was just like a really well seasoned like honey hot chicken salad with uh like he cut up like onion rings in it so it had little like fried bits it was like crispy in there and stuff which was really cool i don't know it was freaking good i had to like shove it in me though I'm, i never eat so fast as i eat on wednesdays i'm like bro the heartburn might come up but it was worth it <laughs> Of course, Rob, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry that I go AFK in the middle of this, but it's like important to take breaks, especially since it's like four hours long. Uh, you've got a freelance question. Let's see, you've been hired to illustrate a textbook for a professor that I know here in the UAE. We haven't discussed pricing yet. You've never done freelance before. How do I go about asking for payment? He so far has just given me a general idea of what he wants and he said he will pay for you each page that you produce. You studied 3D animation in the States, but never finished the degree due to life circumstances. Yeah, it, it's totally cool. I understand the not finishing the degree thing, but uh, you have work, so that's amazing. Congratulations on that. Now, in terms of pricing for illustration-based things like per page stuff, I'm not an expert on that, right? Um, I usually work hourly, uh, worst case, not, not worst case scenario, hourly or, um, lump sum for the entire project. How I calculate these things is uh, based on an hourly amount, right? So if you're working per page, if you have like a lot of pages to do, like let's say he wants you to illustrate like a hundred pages, that's a lot. Um, each page you should, you should kind of like figure out how many hours would it take you to work on like, you know, the page, right? So, uh, let's say you, you know, if you're doing each page like one a day, like maybe it's simple illustrations, then you would just calculate maybe an eight hour um, cost. And uh, you also wanna keep in consideration the, uh, like if you're going to um, license it like are you giving him full permission to use these things uh, you know how, how are you licensing your illustration uh, illustration licensing is another interesting one to think about is this guy a um, like you know from a bigger studio if so then they can afford a lot more and they will pay a lot more if is this person an individual if so they probably um, you're gonna have to maybe like negotiate a little bit more about the licensing thing or if you're you know you don't think that it's gonna go anywhere you're not gonna get royalties in the future then you know don't talk about licensing and just kind of do your lump sum stuff but uh, in terms of so hold on let me try and find the person oh I'm catching my breath I ate fast guys <laughs> uh, let me try and find her on uh, Twitter, I'll send you, um, Becca, I think. They have, like, a really interesting, so Becca has somewhere started talking about illustration, like, a lot of that stuff, or, like, uh, freelance stuff, and that she touched on illustration as well, because she's a freelance artist, she talks about, um, the, uh, Ah, what's it called? I, I don't know if I can find it. I can just link you and you can kind of like go through her tweets or not her Sorry, they their tweets um, And just kind of figure out where 
Yeah, I would just go through their tweets and kind of figure it out. Here. So check out Becca's... Uh, mm. There we go. Becca's Twitter. She uh, They, sorry, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, they talk about a lot of... Uh... Oh yeah, yo, my freaking page. Okay. Yeah, they talk about a lot of freelance stuff, so you're gonna be able to find um, a lot of interesting stuff based on uh, licensing and what to charge. And a lot of other people have chimed in on that as well. I can't find the exact tweet right now, but it's in there. They, they talk about that a lot, or at least have. <clears throat> Okay, go go back to this. so fast I'm like trying to catch up with myself <laughs> you were once uh wait when when finishing your work and you don't in a similar position being treated with no respect whatsoever by the CEO of the company you used to work for and after it happened the second time you quit and they used to give me so many project work at the same time it's just stressful yeah yeah it's it's because a lot of the time they just kind of see like what you have done and they just put that as like your bar that you can always reach but it's like nah <laughs> that's not how it should be all right okay so what do we okay i'm gonna i'm gonna work on the carapace let's do a dynamesh quickly saving just to make sure in case this is a bad dynamic. No, this is fine. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm sorry I can't be more specific than that, um, because I don't work on like per page illustration stuff, but if I did, I would definitely tell you what I knew. So hopefully that, like, she can, or they, oh my gosh, I'm the worst, um, if they can, you know, maybe point you in the right direction with their tweets. 
studio does not use your work, are you still compensated? Uh, yes, you should be. If they're not compensating you for the work that they're paying you for, or that they're hiring you for, uh, that's a big red flag. So if you get hired, but they don't want to, you know, to concept or something, and they don't end up using it, that's okay, and that happens all the time for me. Um, because it's just sort of idea stuff, and so then you still get paid because you still gave them ideas. That's what concepting is. Where's my dog? He is, <laughs> he is behind on the ground. I don't know if you can, can kind of see his, uh, his butt right there. He's eating um, a puzzle food toy that I filled with like nasty smelling food. So my room smells great right now, but it keeps him busy. Oh man. <laughs> Hi Lou, how are you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Alright, so I've got these. I'm gonna crunch out a few more of these things right here. From here, let me see. Yeah, it's that one. Uh, 
Tessimate? I don't really use Tessimate that often. Um, so I'm not really sure like what you would want me to show with it. If you told me something a little bit more specific, I could maybe show you, but I don't really like use that feature very often. Most of what I do, like if if I'm using like any kind of like tessimation, um, it will usually be uh, from the sculpt Sculptress Pro mode. It essentially like tessellates as you are sculpting. If you have that uh, active, but a lot of the time I don't while I'm working. Your robots got sponsored this entire month? Your robots? What are you talking about? Your robots got sponsored? So I'm looking at all these like different types of ephemerias. Uh, and I kind of want to like, I kind of want to like ad adapt a little bit more of the, uh, the spiky, the spikiness. <clears throat> I kind of like the fact that there, there are secondary spikes that come out, kind of come out, but at the same time, I'm like, well, Maybe if I just kind of accentuate like the side plates here, that might be neat. We just pull these out just a little bit. guys we're gonna start splitting some stuff off like this one needs to be removed split masked split masked Okay, and then this one can close holes. 
this. I'm gonna dynamesh each one. streaming a recorded video. The video seems to be recorded from Twitch. Um, I'm not. This is live. It's recording as it as I'm streaming. The entire stream is not yet on Twitch because I haven't done it yet. <laughs> this is live. It's not recorded. I mean, it's being recorded, but it is not, uh, it's not just a video. Hey Johnny, how are you doing? Peck out your peckers. I'm not gonna have another one there. I think having that will be totally fine. We'll boost up the feathers. Peepers. Peck out the peepers. Like technically these are going to have to be more like that. Streaming on both YouTube and Twitch. Yeah, I'm streaming to Facebook as well. Welcome to ZBrush Live. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's trippy. Ugh, God. Stupid nose always goes as soon as I start streaming. I wonder why. So weird. Woo. Um, what was I gonna do? What was I doing? On a scheduled date, yep, every uh, every Wednesday, most Wednesdays, anyways, unless I say otherwise. But it's been most Wednesdays. Boom, boom. I 
I'm gonna just turn that off for now. And then this one. Hmm, how can I integrate this a little bit better? So with this, I was doing like this whole front thing and then the side. So the side, the side things are interesting because they, they kind of are like little flappy things. Like these bits are actually like long and flappy. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, here. <laughs> kind of like, kind of like so. Hey Maple, how are you? A Nick, a Nick Bibby, Nick Bibby, Nick Bibby. Oh my goodness, my nose. Rotating stuff around and going like, whoa, trippy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Thank you, funny. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, they should be on the ZBrush playlists. Should be there. water bird a griffin thing this oh it's a harpy eagle you see the exact names of everything that i'm working on at the bottom of the screen that's why i put it there a grimp oh boy inserting let's see here it's right here there we go it'll insert I think between these things that's what I'm gonna do play around more with how it works uh, when I start posing it I think just get the shape in there all right let's see here so did more of like 
This guy, okay. We need more of this action right here. this guy down I think <laughs> hi mister how are you doing do I make models for video games no I do for film though a lot of the time for film I think I like that a little bit better. There we go. Like that structure I feel like makes, feels a little bit better. We could even do a, a double spike because I've seen the other ones have like those spike things. But first, there's usually like, hmm. So it's tricky because, okay, so these wings, I'm gonna have an insert point of like, one big one right there and then here underneath this whole bit should technically be one thing here and then we will mask it off Centennial? Wait, wait, what? Hold on. Whoa. What are you guys talking about? Oh, yeah. Like, uh, when we hit, uh, oh, sorry. When we hit, um, 100, 100 streams, a century worth of free content. <laughs> what is that illustration from? Oh, I, I drew it for Inktober. I just not see a 2D reference. Yeah, it's my, um, it's my medrewing for inktober right, so this one literally going to pull this out right here It'll be that longer piece. It's cool because they do have like these like longer, longer kind of shape things going on here. Actually, this one still would be separate. All right, so this is separate.
this piece right here. It's actually just a giant spike that comes out the side. mine for a day oh do you though <laughs> i don't know i don't know if you i don't know <laughs> yeah. i mean sure it'd be great <laughs> hey amelia thank you so much um yeah it does have wings i'm sorry i saw that after but yeah it has wings It's a cursed thing. I think all of us have like weird thoughts, so you know, you know. All right. So I can dream about cheese bread. Ooh, yeah. I I wish I dreamed more or dreamt more about cheese bread than I do currently. I don't really like have many dreams. I dream a lot. Ah uh, yes, the doggo is now not licking his stuff, but now he's eating his dinner, finally. I love how like giving him like puzzle toys, like the food food toys, will get him hungry enough that he'll actually eat his freaking dinner. Because he gets frustrated that he can't get it out, he's like, but now I'm hungry because I've had a taste of food, so I guess I'll eat my dinner. <laughs> it's like a trick that I use with him because a lot of the time he just he's like no this is peasant food I'm not gonna eat it but putting the canned dog food the good stuff that is way too expensive to get him for every single meal inside of like a Kong or something like that that he has to work to get it out of always makes him hungry enough for his uh for his dinner <laughs> You won't dream if you're if you're under the influence. Well, now I know. But I can tell you I am extremely sober, believe it or not. I do a lot of running, so I don't really partake. I find it's better for my mental health too better for my health in general. <laughs> I don't dream is false like everybody dreams it's like more like I just don't re really remember a lot of my dreams when I wake up the only ones that I really remember are the sleep paralysis things that happen 
but that hasn't happened for a while, thank goodness. Because I hate it when that happens. I absolutely hate it so much. I actually I actively avoid sleeping on my back because that's usually what triggers my sleep paralysis. Or at least it did, I don't know. I haven't slept on my back in a long time. <laughs> I have I've been traumatized. You gonna have a Monty cuddle? Yeah, I'll let him finish eating his dinner. It's rare that he eats his food. He doesn't he doesn't really eat his food, so streaming for quite a long time. How do you get hired as an artist for Pixelogic online contents? I, yeah, I've been streaming for like two years, I think. Um, but uh, before streaming for Pixo, I was streaming on my own channel, just like completely stupid doing whatever. And then like, if you want to apply for a Pixelogic to be like a ZBrush live streamer, you can actually just like fill out the application. Like if you're, if you're on Twitch, um, down in the info panels, there is like an apply uh, thing. And you can just fill that out and send it to the email address that it tells you to and then they'll review your portfolio and stuff and then they'll probably have like if they like your work then they'll um reach out to you for like a quick like interview kind of thing and then after that you can kind of like tell them what you were thinking to add to the channel and all that kind of stuff. this is basically what it is Um, well, your dreams definitely happen in your head, scientifically speaking, but if we're talking about like some sci-fi fantasy stuff, it would be cool to uh, conceptualize the idea of, well, that was like <laughs> double meaning, my bad, um, <laughs> double of the same meaning, but uh, it would be interesting to think about like, you know, when you're dreaming, you transport to another dimension and experience a whole other life, but Scientifically speaking, it happens in your brain. <laughs> However, if you want to talk about not understanding the brain well enough so that maybe there are multiple things going on inside of your own head, sure. But again, that's more of like a... It's more of like sci-fi, right? Do I see monsters in my dreams? Uh, no, I actually, no, not really. Well, I've, I, any of the dreams that I've had that isn't sleep paralysis related is usually very mundane. Picard lives an entire life. Yeah, there's like, yeah. It does feel like some, some dreams that you have, like you've really, you really feel like it's been like a whole day or even like I've had, I've had like fever dreams. Like, you know, like when you're too hot, your body's too hot, you go to sleep, like if you're sick and then you dream like really vividly. 
uh, it has to do with like your temperature, which is really crazy. But um, I've had fever dreams where I wake up and I'm like, what year is it? <laughs> uh, wait, hold on, let's see. Take medication to reduce nightmares because you have like feature length horror movie dreams. Ooh, bro, that doesn't sound fun. Yeah, that sounds exhausting as heck. Oh, interesting, Cam. I didn't realize that. Yeah, sleep paralysis is awful. I hate it. It's, it's so bad. I'm so glad that I don't really like have it as much as like I don't have it anymore. Um, I mean, maybe if I fell asleep on my back, like I said, because like everybody's kind of got like this like a trigger for sleep paralysis. Like I have to, I have to have like closets closed. That's one big thing. I have to have um, the doors closed. Like all doors need to be closed, absolutely closed. Otherwise. It's just in my head that like something's going to be there <laughs> and when I get sleep paralysis, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my god. You have you as a trigger. Wow, it's edgy, edgy cam. That's super edgy. <laughs> It's not a good night when you're asleep and things have happened that aren't great. Yeah. So edgy. Oh, you want cuddles? Yeah. You want a hug? You want a hug? Okay. Look. Look. There he is. Wow. Yes. There we go. Are you happy? Got your hug? You got your hug? Well, guys, it's Monty time. Yeah. Yeah. You full? Remember one dream you had was you were a character in AC2 and you were eavesdropping on the Templar meeting under a cathedral and heard one of the guards ask Templars, what about the cannon water? <laughs> oh my god, dude. I feel like in that case, it's like you've been playing a lot of AC or like watching videos or something, like a lot of it. I remember when I played Mass Effect 2, I was I was having dreams about Mass Effect. Like I was, I was Commander Shepard. <laughs> Yeah. You happy? Yeah. Oh. Yes. So much Mass Effect, dude. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it, I feel like Mass Effect 2 was like the most immersed in almost any. I, I want to say the most immersed I've ever been in a video game was when I was playing through Mass Effect 2. I just really like it's just it was such a gripping story and then they threw it out the window. That's <laughs> shit, Atlantis. Okay, Reaper. Okay. Marauder Shields, the one true boss. Yes. Yeah, Ooh! That was a shaky. Wow. Wow. Hello. You've got lipstick on your forehead. Oh my goodness. Sorry. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. His name was Marauder Shields. Marauder Shields. Oh yeah, give me these almonds. Oh wow. Hmm. 
Was Mass Effect the game that had a famous voice actor voiceover? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like a bunch of games have famous voice actors nowadays. Monty's face and lipstick and then post a pic to Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I want to draw eyebrows on him. I want to give him eyebrows. It's like my brow pencil or something. It would be pretty funny. Just always make him look worried. <laughs> Give him threaded eyebrows. <laughs> Give him nicer brows than I've ever seen in my life. Oh yeah. I can only give him eyebrows good enough that I can actually like draw myself. So if I, if I, he can only ever have eyebrows as good as the eyebrows that I give myself. So there's a, uh, there's a limit to how amazing his eyebrows will look when I give him. <laughs> All right, let's see. Underneath here, oh, you know what? See, this is tricky, because I do, like, I'll have to, like, pose this, right? Oops, sorry about that. So I think if we do it like this, I'll take this one off. I'll just do this gesturally. Because I think it'll be fine with the wings. I think it would be easier to do it in pose than otherwise. So I'll just kind of figure something out with the wings right now. Mm -hmm. that back. Yeet! <laughs> How's it going? Alright, and now... Alright, this overall...
feel like it did a lot more of like a straight thing here. And then it kind of went through. So I'll do that. Pull this guy in here. Taking it to finish? I don't know. I don't know. I just like, I know that I was like pretty, like I haven't been feeling super great today. So I was like, oh, I want to do something that I don't have to really use my brain as much for. <laughs> Let's do like a piece that I <laughs> technically already concepted. So that's why I am doing this. Just like
I'm not even gonna really bother with making this look like super good. I just want like gesture. We got like gesture going, which is good enough. Right a bit down. Split two parts. Yep, yep, yep. See you all summer. Have a good, uh, good evening. Oh, no worries. Uh, is your name Lucrecio? Yeah, Zebra is wild. Uh, yeah, Rob, the reference images is also my drawing. Can you eat stream again? No, I'm way too tired for that. You guys feel free to yeet amongst yourselves, but bro, I am zonked. Hey Turquoise, how are you? Keeping track of several streams? Oh, then don't. It's okay. You don't have to... You don't have to watch. It's okay. I'm just here in case you do. Thanks, Bean. Yeah, this one's definitely gonna take me a little bit longer than uh, everything else, just because it is it is quite complicated. Um, the pose is pretty intense. There's a lot going on, right? So, uh, probably won't get this done this stream. I mean, especially since I only have like literally an hour left, but. I'll, like, at least the block it's there. Like, there's no way in heck that I would be able to pose all of this. I mean, I don't have, uh, so far, unless, like, unless I randomly get a work email tonight. I don't really have any uh, 
anything to do tomorrow, so maybe I can just, maybe I can do this, you know? Oh, I just remembered I gotta go to the dentist. Oh, I gotta go to the dentist on Friday. I hate the dentist. I hate the dentist so much. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't want to go to the dentist. <laughs> Thanks, turquoise. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. As far as 3D modeling programs, what do you think is the easiest learning curve? Uh, I, none of them are easy, none of them, there's literally zero, no, I wouldn't, I don't know how to answer that, <laughs> they're, they're all, like, if you have not had any experience in 3D whatsoever, um, they're they're all literally going to be difficult for you like it, starting out unless like you have the proper tools in order to jump past that and what i mean by proper tools is look for look for look for good tutorials look for somebody who's going to walk you through the basics if you're looking at zbrush for example on um zclassroom.com you're, you're, you're gonna have everything you need. They have the beginning, like the beginner stuff, all the way to advanced stuff, and they can walk you through the UI. I would say only focus on the things that you need to focus on initially. Don't worry about using every single tool and having to know about every single tool. It's not necessary. Um, if you want to be a character artist, then quite simply just focus on the stuff that you're going to need to be a character artist. So find a tutorial that will take you from A to Z uh, stepwise for creating like a single asset. I would say whatever program that you're learning, type that into Google, followed by beginner. <laughs> That or like, let's say it's Maya, right? Type in Maya Barrel Tutorial. Or maybe you're doing Max. 3D's Max Barrel Tutorial. ZBrush Barrel Tutorial. And just follow these things, right? And I'm saying barrel because everyone makes barrels. That or rocks. You do rock as well whatever everybody makes rocks and barrels there's a hundred tutorials hundred thousand tutorials out there for rocks and barrels and so i would say it doesn't matter about the learning curve whatever you're getting into it's going to be difficult just look up a really simple tutorial that will guide you through a really simple asset creation and you're gonna be you're gonna be fine um but yeah barrels barrels will be your friend uh, honestly, if you're learning Maya, just you can type that in right now, like Maya 3D barrel tutorial. It'll take you through the whole thing. And then you can build off of that knowledge from there. As long as you know the essentials, like the, the basics, you're gonna be fine. Oh, this is the annoying song. It starts out like, ooh, okay, I feel that, and then it just gets annoying. <laughs> it's called Woodpecker. So many barrels. I know. Barrels are it, it's just barrels, man. <laughs> barrels are a thing of in the industry.
all your life in one barrel. <laughs> yeah, just get the get just do a barrel roll barrel. No, not roll, just barrel. Just do a barrel. Not terribly concerned about the actions in the program. Some of the programs just don't have a very user-friendly setup. That's what you're asking. Uh, yeah, I mean, it also just depends on what you, what is user-friendly, right? I absolutely hate to my core the Apple iOS. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. But then so many other people are like, it's so user-friendly. It's wonderful. It's so intuitive. I beg to differ. So it really just depends on you as a person. I think ZBrush is super user-friendly, but I know so many people that will disagree with me. I'd say just get in there, start using it, you'll figure it out. I use a tablet. I use Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. How important are CVs resume when you're starting out? Uh, when you're starting out, very important. Um, when you start, <laughs> when, you, when you've been doing it for a while, man, I have not sent a resume. I mean, I have my resume, right? But I, I have not had to send it to anyone um, starting up a job in a while. It's, it's like, you know, they see your work and that's good enough for them, right? Uh, but yeah if you if you're just starting out you're gonna want a nice resume you're gonna you're gonna want to make sure that it doesn't have like you know like those hp bars and like stats and stuff like that that some people do on their resumes it's so just don't do that don't put that stuff on your resume like oh like here's my soft skills and like program skills and like how good based on like stars or like points or experience like bars for each of them like hi this is maya i have four out of five stars like why would you put that on your resume just say you're proficient in maya <laughs> like nobody's gonna want nobody wants that i don't care what your school is telling you when a recruiter is looking at your resume in this industry they're not looking for like stat bars and like potions and stuff like that they're look they're literally looking for what you know, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So just like, just get your information on there. Like, you know, when you're, when you're first starting out from school, like what kind of clubs were you uh, a part of? Were you part of a 3D club? Like put that in, um, have you worked on a film by yourself or with a group, put that in, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, just, just show them your work ethic, right? That's a really big one. And also, also, here's a big, big secret. Are you guys ready? Are you listening to this? Because everybody complains about this one, which is ridiculous. Everybody complains that, oh, well, in order to get a job in anything, you have to have like five years of experience already. No, they just put that there because it's already weeding out the weak. Like it's already weeding out the people who don't think they're good enough. Just apply, apply, you never know. You never know, like honestly, if you're looking for a job and you know that your portfolio has been worked on, you've got, you, you know, let's say you're, char you're going for character art. You've got your, uh, your high res, you've got your low res, you've got your textures in there, you're showing your wireframes, you know everything is up to speed. You got it all looking like fine and wavy, you know what I mean? then apply <laughs> they might say hey this junior position already requires two years of experience like it just just apply just do it okay trust trust they're literally putting their putting that there as like we would prefer somebody who is like super proficient but uh, i guess if you're coming straight out of school and you blow all these people that are two years experience already out of the water then who cares we'll hire you anyways right so it's just like just do it. Oh, this has XP bars into the garbage bin and goes. Literally, like, don't do that. <laughs> you're you're hurting yourself essentially if you start putting XP bars and you have nothing. Like, if you put all of them at perfect, the person's gonna look at that like, okay. If you don't put all of them as perfect, the person's gonna be like, wow, okay. So why why are you like you're literally highlighting your weaknesses for me right now? <laughs> Thank you.
a job center years ago and one of the people there took one look at your CV and asked why I'm not running your own business. There you go. <laughs> like, don't let your dreams be dreams. I think my, like everything that I say on this stream is a Shia reference, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I would be okay. So skills that that that's that's fair, but also I would be very cautious about doing that um, because a lot of like I just I don't feel like it's if you're getting hired for something, you should know what it is that you're getting hired for. I wouldn't recommend people here saying that they know something when they don't like. Let's say the job needed um, extensive marvelous designer knowledge. Sure, you could learn that on the job, but your employer will be formally miffed at you if you get hired and they find out that you didn't and now you have to waste more of production's time learning the program in order to do it. It's not necessarily a good thing. It doesn't look good on you either. So in your case, you're probably very lucky that you were hired in at like a good, a good situation. But I have heard a lot about people who even use work in their portfolio that isn't theirs just to get hired. And they do, right? They sometimes do. And then they get found out while they're in the job that that's not it and they get blacklisted boom done you're done so i would say 100 percent i i actually i when i first started my job the people that i got hired on with because there's a big wave of people um for my first job one of those people was using stuff in his portfolio that he didn't make and it was very obvious when he was in the job too he just got like eaten alive and then booted out like really fast um, and nobody nobody hired him again uh, in that area from what I know everybody knew his name for a while so I'm telling you <laughs> just when you're applying for a job make sure that you know what you're applying for don't don't lie about it if you say that you're proficient in something then make sure that you <laughs> know the program You've never had a paid job. Dang, Reaper. I don't know how you're living. But if, if you're getting by somehow, then that's all that really matters, right? Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Don't just let your yeets be yeets. Just yeet. Oh, here it comes. Oh, God, here we go again. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's fair, Reaper. That's fair. Everybody works and moves at their own pace. <laughs> Yeet me with you. <laughs> I'm upset that this is a thing. I'm upset. <laughs> Been sculpting using mud bogs since that was all you had access to. Okay, so you did have sculpting knowledge. See, that's different than saying, like, you know, just completely lying. Because I. <laughs> yep, mm -hmm. that's a thing. All right, okay, what am I doing? I just keep kind of spinning. I'm so freaking tired today. Oh, we only have like half an hour left. Maybe I'll just kind of do stuff on the face instead because I don't I just I'm so do you guys mind if I don't finish this I'm just really ugh. <laughs> Thank you. 
Where the heck? All right, I'll do that. Actually, okay, and I'm going to separate the bottom part right here. Uh, I'll dynamite mesh it first, I guess. Higher, and then I'll separate this. Nice, Turtle Rock, sweet. That must be a fun place to work. Uh, please suggest me how to sculpt. Um, okay. Uh, well, Zebra Chat has a 45 day free trial. You can go try that and also go and check out um, zclassroom.com and then you'll get all of your beginner tutorials for free be by the uh, Pixelogic people themselves. Other than that, I don't know how to answer such a big question. Sorry. <laughs> hey Grief, um, I worry about topology way later. I don't care. I don't care about it at all. Thanks, Scott. No, oh, thanks, Spine. Oh. <laughs> That's how tired I am. I read something. I'm... That's your name. Thanks, Skills. <laughs> skills for you to envy. Oh my god. Hey, Paul. Paul, though. Are you calling me gouache? I'm gouache? <laughs> oh yeah, Michael Pavlovich is really good too. Like, he goes really fast. Like, he talks like a, like, speed reader. He's nutty. But, I mean, I prefer fast tutorials than slow ones, personally. Actually, perfect learning opportunity. So do you guys ever get this um, when you 
uh, uh, Dynamesh and the Swiss cheese kind of thing that happens, which is really kind of cool for experimental stuff, but if you don't want that <laughs> because you want to sculpt something that doesn't look like that, totally fine and perfectly reasonable, then let me show you how to fix this. So first of all, undo what you just did. Now you can go into the geometry tab, go to mesh integrity, check mesh integrity, Wow, they're all referring to the same vertex. That's probably wrong. They're also sharing more than two polygons. Also very wrong. Not manifold geo. Not really ZBrush's favorite thing. What you can do, there's this magic button called fix mess. It will immediately get rid of all that stuff. Boom. Mesh integrity task completed successfully. You are now okay to Dynamesh. Wow. Okay, this thing needs to get out of my way right now. You're in my way. I'm working here. Oh my gosh, this thing keeps brushing my arm and I think it's a bug. Peace to this girl. Well, thank you for giving this girl peace. I like peace. I'll take your blessings of peace. <laughs>
a time lapse of this. Well, lucky for you, um, you can always just, uh, oops. You could always just go on to the video itself and speed through it. Yeah, uh, go on to, so you're on, you're on Twitch right now. You can go into videos and you can scrub through the saved video. It's all just been in uh, one session, so it's just me sitting here doing my thing as I do. Yeah, just go, so you're already on the Pixelogic page, right? You're already on the Pixelogic page on Twitch. Click videos, and then you should see all of the recorded stuff. You could literally click on the stream um, that's been recorded already and then play through. And no, I don't, I don't, uh, I mean, I do have a YouTube channel, but I don't upload anything there. It's like all old stuff. How do you know when you're ready to apply for jobs? Uh, basically, like, compare your stuff, like, find other juniors in the industry that are working. They have jobs, like on ArtStation it'll say if they have a job or whatever. Um, and just kind of compare and contrast. If you think that you're on par with those those juniors, then you're you're ready, I would say. And if not, what is it that they have that you don't, that you need to work on? Obviously your bar will always, always be higher than the juniors that you're comparing to. However, um, it's a good starting point for like just getting a job but you know your your ultimate like skill level is always going to be like higher and higher and higher but i think that's like a realistic thing to look at it's just like find other juniors on art station that have jobs and compare that when I'm like why is my why is my shift key not working is because I keep hitting the freaking caps lock instead oh my gosh
I honestly hate caps lock. I feel like caps lock just, just should leave. Should be put somewhere else on the keyboard. Jack. So once I'm done this stream, this is literally going to be in like 20 minutes. I'm going to be done the stream. Uh, you could always just go onto uh, onto YouTube, like probably tomorrow or the day after. They're going to have the video up, and then you can watch it there. YouTube, just look for the Pixelogic channel on YouTube. Uh, you could also just go into the video section on this channel on Twitch, and you can see the stuff there. Uh, yep, yeah, I drew it as well. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, <clears throat> I'll share here because I haven't done this in a little bit. I'll share my socials with you guys if you want to see like the drawings. It's on my um, Instagram, like any of the drawing stuff that I do, I post on Instagram usually. I'm not gonna like actually like go through my sketchbook again this stream. Like I, I did that uh, last stream. Interesting. Their beak is so specific.
Uh, am I doing this uh, for a corporation like CD Projekt? Um, I'm not working for a video game company, no. I'm working uh, as freelance for like a handful of different places, some smaller, some larger. I can't talk about the stuff that I'm doing though. Unfortunately, it's very NDA, but uh, it, it is like conceptual R&D work for film mostly, animated feature film a lot of it. I usually do a lot of my creature stuff on stream because like my actual job is usually uh, it's usually related to um, animated characters. Hard buzz. Appreciate it. Uh, have I ever 3D printed? No, I have not, unfortunately. What was what what was what show was it that you worked on that wait. What show was it you worked on that's on Netflix? Oh, no worries, zombie. Um it was uh it was next gen. That was like a while ago. But yeah, I worked on next gen, that's on uh on Netflix. Aw, oh, thanks, Bulbsy. How are you doing? It's nice to see you here. I'm like, uh, it's nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Photogrammetry model is the 28k textures and climbing. Oh my god. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Invest you in. I can invest for you in a 3D printer for you have a little bit, a lot of money. I'm assuming you mean that 3D printers are a lot of money. I I agree, they are. They are ridiculously expensive, but maybe one day. I just don't have like a point in it. It would be very hobbyist, and uh, right now that's not it's not in my priorities. Maybe as a tax write-off at some point. <laughs> Maybe next year, the year after, make it a tax write-off. Uh. Oh, jeez. <sighs> wow. I'm so itchy. If Opsy comes in, I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Just working on stuff. Nasu. You still sculpting too? Like traditional sculpting? I would assume you are. Allergic to you. I'm allergic to everyone in the stream, honestly. I'm just like allergic to streaming in general. I'm just constantly like sniffling, sneezing, and scratching myself on stream. It's like the most attractive thing. Ah, oh, God. 
Thank you, Eddie. You miss it? You've been doing almost all zebra stuff? Yeah, but I mean, like, it's transferable, right? So you'll get, you'll go back and you'll still have improved and improved. That's what I, I, I love that. I love that, you know, it's just, I think one thing though is like, you're gonna probably, you're gonna get back to like traditional sculpting. You're, you're such a, you're so good at traditional sculpting, but like, you're gonna get back to it and you're just literally gonna be like, where's the symmetry modifier? I have been living the good life. <laughs> Hello. Oh, jeez. You print for fun? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Okay, you you just said that. Well, sorry, I'm like really slow at reading chat. Ugh. <laughs> you go sculpt one half expecting the other half to show up. It's like Or it's like, oh, can I just like duplicate this somehow? It's like you have to do double double the work. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, um, I think this is good enough for this sculpt. Yeah, if I wasn't able to like honestly, I'm gonna I'm gonna Somebody had just said, wow, it's like the drawing. It's kind of funny because if it wasn't like the drawing, I'd be like, what's wrong with me? Because I also drew the drawing, so I should be able to redo it in 3D, no? <laughs> what kind of a concept artist would I be if I could do that? <laughs> a bunch of fan art for CFDs got the art director's blessing. That's amazing! No, honestly, zombie, zombie, with, like, feel free to drop your links to stuff if you want people to look at your stuff while I'm doing whatever. Like, feel free. That's totally cool. Um, but yeah. All right. Okay. I'm uh, I'm uh, put my stuff up on the screen. Ooh, Monty knows. <laughs> Where's the blood? Oh my god, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> All right. Uh... Okay, there we go. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for. Ooh, there it disappeared again. <laughs> Come back. There we go. Uh, I might do this off stream. I just I was super tired tonight, so I didn't really get that far. Sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope that I will see you next week. I think I'm streaming next week. I should be streaming next week. Um, more sculpts. Hopefully I'm not as tired next week. Today, I think here, actually here's a bunch of my socials. Uh, feel free. Oh, actually, sorry, zombie. I just, okay. You go and look at zombie stuff as well. Zombie Woofs uh, plugged their stuff as well. Um, and then after me, da 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 da, and then 7.30, so in a half an hour from now, Matt Thorup is going to be, he is going to be streaming as well, so you can stick around if you want to see more sculpting stuff from Matt Thorup, and otherwise I'm going to be seeing you guys next week, uh, if you don't already have ZBrush, you can try it for 45 days. There's a trial and um, Other than that mm, Yeah, I don't really know I guess just bye bye see you next time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so tired.